Yeah. So then let's move to the final topic, which is uh, grades. Um, as you said, speed grader is fantastic it, 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 that it goes right into the grade book. Setting up the grade book is no small challenge, um, I don't think, although it does a wonderful thing. You can set up the algorithm so every specific kind of assignment and its proportion to your final grade is automatically worked in. Fantastic. Again, it, setting it up is thank goodness for Karen. But um, there are a couple of problems with it. The one that I found absolutely the most frustrating is that there's absolutely no flexibility on the final grade, the score for students. So for example, if I have an enormous number of international students in my class taking it pass fail, and if they're a hundredths of a point off of the pass grade, you cannot go in to speed grader to the final grade and alter it. You have to do it when you upload them to web grades. Great, except Canvas has only the students' names, and WebGrades uses ID numbers. So the, the complication of trying to figure out how to get the right, yeah, so you, you understand. Um, I think Nightmare is a little too strong, but comes close, so there's no flexibility at all. It does, however, have a sense of humor. Um, I was recording, um, the quiz grades, the in-class quiz grades last night, uh, they only get a point for full credit. And I, by, by accident, put in five points rather than 0.5 for a student. And a little pop-up window says, I think you've given this student an extreme grade or something like that. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Very nicely said. Um, so, so, but so it, it, except for the complete lack of flexibility and the complexity of setting it up, the grading system in Canvas, the grade book in Canvas is, is terrific. Only one other thing, the screenshot. So in order to be able to see your whole screen and be able to manipulate down your grade book, you have to reduce the font, at least on my computer. You can still read it, but it isn't, it isn't spectacular to be able to manipulate. It also has a great search mechanism in grade book that Tripoli doesn't have. So you can put the student's name in mm -hmm. and their record will come up. So that all is very good. The way it fits in the screen, though, is, is, is very frustrating. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the rubrics a little bit. And uh, I use them in one way. And I had another instructor observe, look at my rubric, and said she uses hers. There's a totally different way to do rubrics that I'm not familiar with. But I think they're really strong. For each assignment, no matter big or small, you can break it down into a, a rubric that you create that has different point values, and you can just click, 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 and it will, depending on the section, uh, the settings you chose, if you want to use that rubric for grading, you have to click that. It'll tally up those points for you. And some of my rubrics are really long. Uh, they're lesson plans, and so I'll combine the rubric with the idea of peer reviews. So I'll sign one or maybe even two peer reviews per student, so they'll have to go and they'll fill out the rubric for me, and then I can just adjust it, go and make a final sweep, and then submit that grade. So that can help kind of minimize some of the uh, tremendous amount of grading I have for some of these things. And oftentimes for the peer review, students are giving each other really rich feedback that helps me too. Um, and it's helpful to see like what they think of each other's work. So I think the rubrics are a really strong feature. And here you have like a basic description and then you can add a detailed description too. So you can have kind of a small sentence like that and then the students can click see detailed description and you can have like a lot of detail on what they're to do. Uh, when filling out the rubric, you can leave general comments about the assignment at the bottom, but also you can click on each item and specifically tell them what they did that caused them to lose points. So as a habit, if I take points off, I'll click and then I'll tell them why, and they can go specifically to that. And we can also leave uh, different types of comments within the document itself. So you can highlight different areas and then have a comment of an area comment. It's really very playful uh, how you can communicate to students uh, why they got the grade they got. And I think that's powerful. Uh, with group assignments, you can select that the whole group will receive the same comment that you, uh, you put. So that's very useful too. And I heard that there's a feature where if you have uh, repeated like comments, like 
APA formatting, I'll have a link to Purdue OWL for them if they didn't get that right. And instead of having to copy and paste that link or type the same thing, I've heard there's a way where you can, uh, um, like you'll see saved comments, but I've never been able to do that. Huh? Through the rubric, yes. Through the rubric, yeah. But I'm not familiar with that, but that would be really neat if I could figure out how to do that. Because sometimes I'm giving very similar feedback on some of these things. Yeah, so I, I've probably already said enough about the anonymous grading. Do, we, do any of you use anonymous grading? No? Minor videos. Okay, so <laughs> hi, hi for that. So kind of yes, kind of no. It's kind of um, nice. Yeah, so it's great. You watch the video, the grade goes in. It's auto magic. So, um, I have a bunch of extra sheets in my thing, so my apologies. Um, so uh, course management, um, uh, assignment <laughs> phony. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this was like one of my big annoying things that like, they, Sharon talked about this a little bit. Like it's just, it's really difficult when you have to go in. It's like each week for me is like readings, you post the video, you respond to the video and like, it just seems like you should be able to just say like, okay, like clone this 10 times, like, you know, put in some different readings and that is apparently not um, possible yet. So, and then, um, yeah, so the, the analytics stuff, I don't know if any of you have played with this, but it, like it's great that they have it, but it's just not quite as, you know, I'm a social scientist, right? And so like, you know, you, you just want more. So, um, you know, like thinking about like the score distributions and, and um, uh, yeah, you know, and just the, there's some things where I think like it could be like a little bit more automatic in the analytics, you know, so like oftentimes I'll have students who will say like, you know, can I get some extra credit or something like that? And, and you'll look back and you can sort of see like they haven't, you know, shown up for the last three weeks, they haven't logged in. Um, but sometimes you'll see that they have logged in and they've spent a lot of time on there, but you don't know like, were they actually just like logged in and left the computer running? Or were they actually like in the video conference, like actually, you know, chatting actively with their colleagues, right? And so some things like that, I think, would be um, nice to sort of capture in the analytics section. Yeah, well, one thing that I think was much nicer in Triple E than it is here is when I, when I look at score distributions for tests in Triple E, it shows me a histogram where I can see how many people yeah. as a proportion got some certain yeah. score, some range of scores, and the yeah, in Canvas, it is, there is nothing similar to that. It tells me what the average score is, but I haven't seen anything more than that, even like a standard deviation, yeah. or that kind of thing. And so, kind of like what I was talking about with student view, the analytics is something where I thought, okay, this will be interesting. I can learn how engaged the students are with my website. And then I tried it a couple of times, and it, it would tell me things like the student was interacting for 100 consecutive hours, and. I didn't quite believe that, and so, <laughs> so, so analytics for me, it, like I see great, um, great potential in it, but it's not something that I use. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's impossible to see the distribution, but for me, the course management, which seems so clunky, given all this technology, was that the teaching assistants had to physically populate their discussion sections with the students from the roster, and in order for us to work as a based on the discussion section model. So uh, that was my big, one of my big clunky moments um, on course management. Oh, is that me? Yeah, yeah. okay, I uh, wish was mute assignments, mute assignments by default. I think that could be helpful. So there's the option to mute the assignment so students can't see their scores. They can see it's muted, right? And then, so that allows you to make changes and then unmute the assignment when you're ready to share the grades with everybody at the same time. And sometimes it hasn't occurred to me to mute an assignment and then I'll start playing around with the grades and they might get an A, but then I'll realize that actually, no, they missed something and they'll see their grade change and they'll get emails about this happening and that upsets students very much. So uh, it would, might be nice if that was kind of more built in there, it can be problematic if we forget to unmute assignment. Sometimes I'll forget to do that. But overall, it's kind of a neat feature. 
Wait, am I right that when you mute an assignment, all the students get an email saying the assignment has been muted? Mm -hmm. So that's an example of something where I often don't mute the assignment just because I don't want to send them this email. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I touched about uh, on this a second ago, but um, you know, so like when we think about like, grading the discussion section, you know, or the you know, sort of comments, it'd be nice to just have a sense of like overall, like you know, here's how many words are being you know, posted just so you can get some kind of sense of that. Um, or, you know, we can see that they were on there for 100 hours, but like, were they actually, you know, in the video conference? Because, you know, if they were just logged in but not in the video conference, I don't really care. Right now, I have my TA literally just go down the list of everyone who's logged in at, you know, some point 15 minutes into the conversation and sort of take attendance. But that seems like something that should be easily automated. Mm -hmm. 